Good morning and welcome to the Gimbal Eye Center. It is July the 23rd, 2012. Our patient this morning is Crystal Chalmers. Crystal's having right eye cataract surgery today performed by Dr. Howard Gimbel. We are looking through the same microscope as our surgeon, so that puts our patient's forehead on the left side of the screen, temple at the bottom. The uh, numbers on the screen are generated by the ultrasound equipment. They are not connected with our patient's vital signs at all. And the uh, patient's pupil will probably appear red. That's a condition called red reflex. That's our camera light reflected off the blood vessels in the back of the eye. So surgery starts with the eye held steady with a Thornton ring, it's called, and then two incisions. A little side port here called a paracentesis, a millimeter wide that provides access for syringes and instruments. Topic line aesthetic applied by Dr. Gimbel. Uh, intracamerally, meaning into the eye, and to the surface of the cornea as well. Our patient's eye was anesthetized prior to the surgery. This uh, solution is also, uh, also in solution with the anesthetic is uh, mydriatic, which will help keep the patient's pupil dilated. Here we see the patient's cataract, the way it's developed, that little button right in the center of the pupil, probably a posterior polar cataract. And this is a cataract that has a bit of mechanical attachment to the capsule membrane, so some precautions will be taken by the surgeon here to ensure that the capsule stays intact. So a, a little bit different cataract surgery. Right now he's filling the anterior chamber with a material called a viscoelastic, which is used to enhance cataract surgery safety. It protects the tissues and surfaces inside the eye as the cataract is removed. It can be used to create some space in the chamber and it enhances the surgeon's visibility. flashes we saw on the screen are scrub, uh, the scrub nurse administering drops to the cornea to keep it moist. Those will, uh, that will occur throughout the surgery. Sometimes you'll see the droplets, sometimes you'll just see the flashes. So now the second incision will be between 5 and 6 o'clock on our view. It's called a clear corneal incision. It's done in two steps with a scratch and then the blade is inserted at a flat angle. This creates a self-sealing wound 2.2 millimeters wide. Now the lens capsule is opened using a pair of forceps. The opening is called a capsular excess. This is made on the anterior or front of the capsule. The cataract is attached to the inside surface of the back or posterior capsule membrane in most cases. If it's a, posterior, if it's a polar cataract, it's very often the posterior polar. So anyway, the capsule is made using a technique Dr. Gimbel devised that he calls a continuous curvilinear capsular axis. This creates a round opening in the capsule. Size, shape, and location are all critical here because they have a big effect on the final location of the implanted lens as the eye heals. Targeted size is typically five millimeters. The round shape also helps facilitate the cataract removal because it's uh, an opening that has a fairly tough edge to it. It's not likely to develop a tear as the cataract is removed. Typically the next step would be hydrodissection. This is where fluid would be inserted or injected between the capsule membrane and the cataract, allowing that fluid to flow around the cataract and separate it from the capsule. In the case of a posterior polar cataract, 
probably won't be a lot of hydro dissection done in order to avoid disturbing that cataract. So we we'll do a, just the just the fluid separation, probably not the rotation. So he's lifting the flap on the anterior face of the cataract. We'll see the ultrasonic handpiece. The technique again will be different here. He will caref very carefully remove the lens material all the way around that little button of cataract material in the center of our patient's pupil. Try to avoid disturbing it as much as possible until he gets the majority of the lens material removed. So a cleaver instrument will be inserted through the side port if needed. That'll help him maneuver the cataract or lens material as he removes it. But uh, this material will be pretty soft. There won't be a lot of ultrasound used initially. So far, no ultrasound at all, just removing lens material with the uh, suction. We should describe the uh, function of the, the uh, ultrasonic handpiece. It's a process developed by Dr. Charles Kelman back in 1962. Ultrasounds used to break up cataract material. The tip is hollow. It has the ultrasonic function. So suction is used to remove the cataract material. And uh, there's a sleeve around the tip that provides fluid back into the chamber to keep pressures inside the eye stable. It's a two-handed operation with the cleaver assisting. So that posterior polar cataract has become dislodged. And it looks like the capsule is still intact. The worry for the surgeon is that the posterior polar cataract can sometimes compromise or weaken the posterior capsule. So that's why the care is taken to remove as much material as possible from around it before it's disturbed. So, so far, everything's going very well. The majority of the cataract has been removed, and the material that remains is, is fairly soft. Uh, the next step is uh, the use of the irrigation and aspiration handpiece. Uh, this one doesn't have an ultrasonic function, fluids and suction only. So he'll suction off the remaining lens or cataract material. There's a, a layer that remains right next to the capsule called the cortex, which is typically removed with this handpiece because uh, it does, it's a little safer to use ne right next to the capsule membrane. So he'll start the cortex removal under the incision and then clean up the inside of the capsule. Now, still lots of care taken here, even though the uh, the posterior polar cataract be 
became dislodged without any capsule damage so far, at least as, near, as far as we can tell from here in the observation room, the capsule could be weakened. So the uh, cortex removal will go very slowly here. So after cortex is removed, the interior of the capsule is scrubbed. And we want the, uh, all of the cortex removed because if any fragments are left behind, they can create inflammation as the eye heals. They can also affect the position of the implanted lens. So the cortex is completely removed. Then the interior of the capsule is scrubbed to remove a layer of cells called lens epithelial cells. And that process starts on the inside surface of the flap of the capsule. So some additional viscoelastic inserted here to probably help keep the capsule stable. And actually no capsule polishing on the posterior surface, at least not so far. May not be required. Capsule looks pretty good right now. So viscoelastic. Next step will probably be the insertion of the lens, although if there's any cortex fragments to be removed, they are usually under the incision and they're removed manually. And that looks like we're okay to go. So this is the lens insertion now. The lens is folded to fit through the incision. It's inserted into the now empty lens capsule. So it mimics the position of the natural lens and it unfurls inside the capsule to a diameter of six millimeters and is positioned inside the capsule by a couple of little legs called haptics that unfurl from the optic edge of the lens. So initially it's the haptics that position the lens. As the eye heals over the next few weeks, the remaining capsule will shrink wrap itself around the implanted lens. So now the viscoelastic will be removed with the I and E tip. As this uh, viscoelastic is removed, it's being replaced with balanced saline solution, which is a, a close match to the natural aqueous in the front chamber of our eye. Now he'll tip the lens and ensure there's no viscoelastic trap between the lens and the posterior capsule membrane.
Then the lens will be rotated again to position it for the insertion of the antibiotics. So now the wounds are hydrated, or at least the tissue in the wounds is hydrated. That's to uh, induce or create a bit of swelling in the corneal tissue that swells the wound shut. And also as the chamber is reformed by adjusting pressure, the wounds will tend to act like one-way valves. Once the wounds have started to seal, the next step is the insertion of antibiotics. And we're not quite there yet. And now the antibiotics, and here the lens is positioned to allow the lens to be tilted, get the antibiotic protection inside the capsule. Now to conclude, Dr. Gimbel will ensure that the wounds are watertight. He'll check, start to check the eye for firmness here. This will be a reapplication of antibiotics. Wounds are checked with a sponge. And pressure applied with the handle of the sponge to gauge the firmness of the eye. And that concludes the surgery at, it uh, looks like a little over 18 and a half minutes.